Hello! Perfidious Pete here, back to ride upon the wondrous wheels of enlightenment as I achieve Carvana in XCOM War of the Chosen. Little bit of spoiler though, I will not be achieving Carvana. I was watching a little bit of the YouTube there, a little bit of that yub tub action, and I saw an advertisement for what I think may be like the stupidest service I've ever seen. Carvana is a thing where people can go online to like buy and sell and or trade used vehicles, which I guess sort of makes it like an online version of Auto Trader magazine, widely respected and a top notch piece of journalism, Auto Trader. It's been a staple of the automobile industry for, you know, like 50 years now. Sarcasm there, Pete. Yeah, you know, the kind of people who are really into Auto Trader magazine, let's just say not the kind of people I'm ever going to understand. What? So Just because I'm firing shots at people who are really into car magazines, Auto Trader specifically, where, you know, you can go buy, like, the used hubcaps from a 76 Ford Pinto? Why would you... Okay, I'm not even gonna try and fire shots. Carvana is, like, the Auto Trader of the... It's an Auto, it's auto Trader magazine for millennials, but I gotta say... My main objection to it is just the idea of the, the cavalier attitude they had towards buying a car. That was my main thing. One of the main thrusts of the advertisement was, was like, hey, you can buy a car while binge watching your favorite TV show. It's so easy. You can do it online while paying attention to something. And here's the thing. You know what? A car is for most people. I mean, sure, I'm... I'm I'm certain they're like idle rich just sitting out there be like, I buy five cars a week, Pete. And hey, you know what? If you're one of those people, good for you. That's fantastic. But for most people, buying a car is a fairly significant purchasing decision. Not all of us can afford a third Bentley. And it really as I mean, think about it. For the financing on most cars, usually when you buy a car, you finance it for 60 months. That's five years. That's five years of your life you're going to be paying for a vehicle so maybe i don't know don't buy it while you're watching the new season of sherlock maybe i uh, call me crazy pay some fucking attention to what you're doing here put in a little bit of effort don't just go yeah that one looks good i'll just get that one and then spend the next five years paying for it a little bit at a time over a monthly but some decisions no are to too important to not be done in we'll your pajamas that's what i'm saying Carvana, I appreciate you trying to make my life more convenient. I can, I see what you're shooting for. And in a general rule, I'm all about convenience. I'm a big fan of uh, like online purchasing. Moving. But don't encourage me to be cavalier about my buying decisions, especially when it comes to something as expensive as an automobile. Like give me, encourage me to be fiscally responsible, Carvana. What's wrong with that? You know, fiscal responsibility. It's, it's what's sexy these days. Fiscal responsibility is the new casual sex. Nothing gets the ladies hotter than knowing you made a good, solid buying decision, didn't overpay for your automobile, and got a sweet, sweet zero APR deal. Trust me, you tell your lady you got 0% financing for 60 months, and she's going to be like, hey... He's got a great credit rating and seems like a stable provider. He's the kind of guy who could maybe successfully raise a child. Perhaps I should let him impregnate me. Or potentially, if you want to gender flip it, to be like, ooh, that lady seems like she's got a good solid head on her shoulders. I bet she'd make a fantastic caregiver for a young child. Perhaps I should impregnate her. That's how it works. Responsible is the new sexy, I'm telling you. Everybody wants to be... Hey, you guys don't get to do stuff. You landed and got shot. Now it's my turn to kill people. Speaking of which, what's the best way for us to do that? I'm thinking maybe we have Chris Varick grapple to the top of this vehicle and just kill both of these guys with some sweet flank shots. If you wouldn't mind. Boiler room. Show them what it is to boil here. Give the old advanced trooper the 100%, 40% crit. I like the fact that it can't miss. I like less the fact that it didn't get a kill, but I still feel like we're going to be okay finishing this dude off. You're done. Get boiled in the boiler room. 
I'm tempted to come up here and try to do something that I know won't be able to miss, but I'm pretty sure a point-blank shot from around the corner, yeah, should not be able to miss. So there we go, we're halfway home. And by halfway home, I mean we've basically just started, but... It's like, uh, you know, making a the solid decision to buy a car. Doing your research is... That's halfway home. You don't you you do the research before you even get to the dealership or if you're purchasing from Carvana to the weird giant glass structure with a bunch of cars inside of it. I don't you know, maybe making a car vending machine. I kind of feel like the Carvana people made the car vending machine not because it was a good idea or because it was something that there was a demand for or even something that was intriguing. I kind of feel like they did it just because they could. They were one of those what would be the stupidest way to possibly sell a car? You know what? vending machine the only way i can think of that would be stupider to make an automobile purchase would be if you bought one out of like one of those claw games be like use the claw and then you that, that's the only way i can think of for it to be stupider speaking of stupid we really want to deal with this guy i'm trying to figure out what the best way i don't suppose you can get a grenade all the way out there can you you're like one tile short that's very unfortunate. Well, what if we have our guy who still has his grappling hook action? The old big friendly giant here, the BFG. Also known as the big fucking gun. What if we just have him grapple to the top of here, drop a grenade on this dude's head, and then murder him? I feel like that could work. The only drawback to the grenade plan is it is going to create a swarm. We could also just shoot him twice. Maybe let's just shoot him twice. No chance for a swarm this way. Iron Giant takes the shot. Got one ability from a height advantage, too. And can he close it out? You done, son. Get ruined. See what happens when you do the research, take your time, and make a good, solid purchasing decision. Or in this case, a spending decision in that we were spending ammunition to gain ourselves one dead Advent Soldier. Okay, so the loss, there's a big robot over there, and he's going to be very difficult for us to kill. So if you guys could go punch him a bunch, that'd be handy. I mean, maybe go punch that robot a little, though. Maybe slap him around a bit. Give him the old, uh... You know what? Give him a good dick shot. Pete, robots don't have penises. Well, okay. Don't feel like you should maybe fire shots at the robot based on his lack of external genitalia, you should probably fire shots at the robot just because he's a giant soulless metal death machine and is out to destroy you. That's the right reason to fire shots. You want to be hating on a robot, you know, do it for the right reason. Like the fact that, you know, he's not getting punched by Lost, even though at least one of those guys should definitely be hitting him by now. 58% chance at the Lost, but you know what? It's not going to get any better. I was going to say there's no real drawback for taking the shot other than, we, I mean, we did waste some ammo. The wasted ammo, a bit of a drawback, but not a huge drawback. Maybe you've got a shot as well. You do. 69% for the old Iron Giant. There's no way the Iron Giant was going to miss a chance of 69. I think we'll reload as opposed to go on Overwatch here because I don't really want to waste ammo in a shot that's unlikely to hit against enemies that we don't really care about or won't really have a lot of difficulty killing. And also against enemies who most definitely aren't punching a fucking robot in the head like they're supposed to be. I asked you guys. You are. You're very powerful, Mr. Lost. Any dash? Any dashers over here? None of these are lost dashers, which means they're unlikely to be able to move and shoot. Let's go ahead and take the warm up shot here. We knew that wasn't going to kill him, but that's fine. Varric's going to polish him off with his follow up shot. Exactly as planned. And then he'll use his bonus shot to just go ahead and reload. And our little Iron Giant friend here should be able to just sweep up some of the trash. Couple of these guys do have more health than we can guaranteed take in one swing. For instance, that guy. Let's take a follow-up shot here. You're dead as well. And we will use our bonus action here to get a little bit of a reload off. This man should not be able to attack us. He is not a lost dasher. Shouldn't be able to get here and swing, not in the same turn. Standard garden variety lost. He couldn't even get here. 100%. Might not get a kill, but might get a kill. Didn't get a kill. Well, okay. Get the headshot in there. Reload. 
Gonna come around this corner a little bit, taking it easy, because again, we know there's a robot up there. Gotta exercise a little bit of robotic caution here. If we are gonna spawn that robot, I'd really, really like to do it with like a grapple maneuver, where we grapple to the top of that roof, say, and get a couple ace shots at the robot on the way down. You'd get a free kill there. Maybe we just avoid the robot altogether. Like, we might be able to. 58% is not fantastic. My concern here is that we're going to activate both the Lost and the robot. That would suck. Did not, though. Didn't exactly pull off the world's greatest shot there, did you, Boiler Room? So let's bring you over here. I'd like you to be closer to the loss, but not really closer to or with any significant chance of activating that robot, because we don't want to mess with that guy. We're not robot ready yet. Any of you guys a loss and dasher? None of you are dashers, so we're fine. Go ahead and take your 82% headshot. Fantastic work. Well well played, because now you're going to spend your neck first action next turn reloading. Did one of you guys go swing at the robot? I mean, help a brother out here. The robot's just over there, cool and chilling his heels. Not sure that's the way that euphemism is supposed to work, Pete. Didn't you mean he's just over there chilling, cool in his heels? Isn't that what you meant? Yeah, that's what I meant. But that robot's over there just chillaxing, possibly even maxing and relaxing. And what are we? We're over here killing the lost. Yeah, we're not going to get a free shot out of that, but uh, old big friendly giant here. And by... Oh. Uh, this is risky. What if we miss? Oh, well, we can't miss. Good. Perfect. I'm thinking maybe we don't fight the robot. Maybe we just go. We got the grappling hook. We could probably slip past him. I mean, we're definitely not going to slip past him. That move is absolutely going to activate him. So maybe we see... I was hopeful we could get ourselves into maybe a little better position with a grapple. Okay, that will work. Go there and reload, and then Iron Giant, you step up here. Also reload. And then we can grapple to the top of that container maybe and kill the robot that way. Or we could both wrath ourselves over to the robot. Or we could just say to hell with the robot and go around. Feels like maybe going around the robot is even a uh, still better idea. Alternatively, we could just grapple over and be right on top of him. Was he on this side? I don't remember which side of the container he was on. I think he might be on the far side. Let's assume he's coming at this Gary Larson style and play this even a little conservative. Ordinarily, I'd be all guns blazing, gung ho, let's get in there. But no, no, I'm an older, wiser Pete now. I used to be the kind of Pete who would be like, hey, I'm going to buy a car out of that vending machine because you know what? Uh, who, who does that? That's the kind of thing that a freewheeling man about town, that's the sort of thing a, a guy like me does. I buy cars out of vending machines, but I'm an older, wiser Pete now who's like, dude, I got to pay for that car for five years. I don't want to have to spend the next five years paying for a car I bought out of a goddamn vending machine that I absolutely to despise. I want to do the work, put in the research, Make a solid buying decision. Know I'm getting the most for my money and just, you know, some garden variety financing will really be fine. Get me a nice little bit of 0% APR so I'm not paying juice on a car I don't necessarily want for the next five years. I don't want to spend the next five years suffering for one moment of foolish idle pleasure. Be like, ha ha, look how clever and cool I am. I bought a car out of a vending machine and then spend five years regretting it. I don't want to be that guy. Maybe you guys could go punch the robot now? Like, if one of you would punch the robot, that would be really help us out a lot. We do have a 96% chance to hit here, but you know what we've also got? We also have a grenade, and we are definitely going to want to shred this guy's armor. We got two damage out of that grenade. you got to be fucking kidding me. Two damage? That's it? Two. Yeah, well, I mean, his armor. Soon to be out of ammunition. Also, you know what? I feel like there's really no need to grapple here. We're better off to just step to the corner here, stay in full cover, and shoot at the robot. 
We can't even see the lost. 87% chance to hit is not fantastic. I'm tempted to go, you know what? I'm beyond tempted. We're not going to take a moment or even risk not killing this group. We're, you're dead, man. We're not even going to risk not getting the kill here. We're throwing the volatile mixed grenade and getting the slam dunk. We can go around the lost if we got to. We'll grapple to the rooftop and go over. We can go over the top. We'll make this uh, absolutely a miserably bad Sylvester Stallone movie. We'll go over the top. Take your headshot. Take your kill. Yeah, but you did I use your... Okay, what can you do here, BFG? You got a 90% chance that a man you can't fail to kill as long as you hit. You did get him. There's another three health guy up there. I think we can take him. Let's move, take a shot at that dude. Can't fail to kill him. See? Slow, methodical, methodical advance, and that's what we're doing here. We're being dyed in the wool killers. Methodical and thorough. It's just the way Gary Oldman taught us to be. Be a dyed in the wool killer. Who, son of a bitch, there's another robot in there. Yeah, it's real bad. There's another robot. We don't have any grenades, which means we're going to only recourse here is to just shoot him a whole bunch. And the fact that there are more lost on the scene, not helpful, especially considering that one of those lost is going for the robot. I could justice a lost. What I really wanted to do was actually grapple myself over to the robot. I wanted to wrath. Not justice. I want wrath. Can I wrath the robot? We're not fast enough to wrath the robot. Well, this is a bit of a pickle. Can we grapple closer to the robot so that we might wrath him? We cannot. We have no guarantee that the lost are going to go for the robot. If we go to the rooftop, this guy is going to fire grenades at us, guaranteed. And I'm still going to do that. Let's just get out of here. This is a moment where we got to try and make our speed work for us and make sure that the robot can't get to us. So we stay a maximum distance. If we can guaranteed kill a lost, then we can. We'll shoot him on the way out. See you in hell. And then we're just hauling balls. We're, we're like best available speed. Flank speed. Everybody drive as fast as possible. We're going to use the roof to shield us from potential grenades. Although if we do get hit by a grenade here, we're going to get dropped through the roof and that's going to suck. Let's hope he maybe shoots at the lost. He did not. Okay, lost. I'm kind of like looking for maybe a little help here. I just want to give a brother a hand, maybe, and take a, take a poke at that robot, maybe. Uh, take a swing at that robot, perhaps. No? How about a little free movement? We'll use our speed to our advantage. 93%, but it's not even, like, the potential for a kill. We want to kill what we can kill. 86%. No and a whiff. That was definitely not what we needed. Are any of these dashers? Regular lost, regular lost, regular lost. Okay, so no dashers. Good. Come over here. Take cover behind this truck. And that should put us within one move of safety. We're getting cagey here. We're like, like cat and mouse games. Utilizing hook. We're going to hope some of these lost try and make a play on the robot. 97% pulls the connection. We still have two actions. We can afford one miss here. Let's see if we can get one more kill on one of these six health guys. We didn't. Now our gun is empty. That's doubly bad, but we're just going to we're gonna go for the exit. I don't know if we got enough speed to make it. Like if we stand in that tile, almost certainly not. We got to go further. Iron Giant, you're kind of slow, buddy. You could wrath yourself over, I guess, for a little boost. Any of you guys going to make a play on the robot? Nah, they're ignoring him categorically. What's the robot doing? Getting punched. There you go. Get into a fist fight with this dude and save us the trouble while we run like hell. So we cannot make the exit, but we can almost certainly avoid the lost. Make full speed. A long run. 
go here. You have bullets in your gun, and we can kill at least one of these guys for certain without using- <gasps> No, I shot the wrong man! Okay, never mind, I didn't shoot the wrong man. Better than I thought. Suck it. Also, run like hell. These lost can't keep pace with us, we're too fast. We're too fast, we're too furious. We got too much Vin Diesel under the hood. You can't stop us, Lost. Get shit on. Also, we're out of here. See you in hell. I'd love to take a parting shot at one of you as we go. Um, you know? Why not take a parting shot? We got a justice, let's use it. Why don't you get scorpioned over here and get shanked in the brain? Just for funsies. And then we'll go ahead and leave. We could have you try and shank a man in the brain, but it's not gonna kill him anyway, so what's the point? I don't wanna I don't wanna make you feel bad, Chris Varick. I'm not setting you up to fail. Setting you up for success. We didn't kill the robot, and I feel a little bad about that, but we still did kill 22 out of 25 lost, so all things considered, pretty solid performance. Our guys were relatively low rank as well. They weren't newbies, but they weren't exactly grizzled veterans either. They're not well seasoned. They're exactly the kind of people that uh, Carvana the is looking to cash in on. They're like these guys. The chosen, they're youngish, a little inexperienced. With. They're the kind of people who might think that the novelty of buying a car from a vending machine was a good idea. Chris Varick's going to pick himself up a little bit of wrath. We don't want zeroed in. We don't want return fire. And Varric doesn't really have a good enough combat intelligence for us to go hog wild buying him bonus abilities. BFG is gifted. We definitely want Whiplash because it's super good. If we had that on the last mission, we probably could have greased that robot. Return fire is still shit. Full throttle. I still don't understand. That ability does not seem good. I'm starting to warm up to zero in. I think maybe it... Mm, has the potential to be like a quiet, quietly competent, quietly good, sort of a subtle, subtle, a subtle contributor, I guess is what I'm, I'm thinking about. It's like, um, it's the Will Patton of abilities. When Will Patton is in a movie, I mean, he's very rarely in the re lead role and almost always is just quietly a solid supporting character in the background. He's never the hero, but he's the like sidekick the guy who makes the hero realize why he's fighting. He's the guy who inspires the hero on his hero's journey. Avatar project progress should have been reduced by two thanks to our successful covert operation. Fantastic. My boys should have gotten some rewards for this as well. Increase some cohesion and get 20. Okay. I was expecting us to get a little something else in there. Let's assign a new covert action, and then I think maybe we'll just wrap things up. Hunt the Chosen Assassin. We do not have a major plus who is not injured, so that one's right out. We got anything else that's got a promotion in here? We can gather supplies for a promotion. Don't hate that. Is that it? Yeah, so we're pretty much gathering supplies then. So who do we want to send on that particular task? Let's take a look at the armory. We got to be a little careful here. I mean, Xander Cage is back in one day. Can we afford to send Xander Cage out on a mission, though, when he's back in one day? We're almost going to need him. We got Beardo coming back in two. We got Knockaround coming back in two. And it sounds like we're starting we could take Jackie to Norcio and get him promoted to Capo. That hey, that's right. It'd be Capo Jackie over here. Putting me in some charge of stuff. To a to gonna start seeing some kickbacks from the down lows, if you know what I'm saying. Get me knocked up there. I'm gonna, I don't want to be just like on the level of a big pussy or a bally walnuts. You got to bump me upstairs there. I want to be, you know, not necessarily on the kingpin level, but I want to be just one step under the Tony Soprano. Wouldn't one step under Tony Soprano be Tony's Guma? Wait, okay. Who in the mob relationship? Who outranks who? Does the Guma outrank the wife? Because I kind of feel like the wife probably outranks the Guma. It's the mother of your children, after all. Let's send Jackie DeNorcio out there and see if he can find... This is it. That's what the mission is. Jackie's going questing for a Guma. He doesn't have one. He's like, hey, Pete, come on. Every wise guy gets to have a Guma. Can't have, uh, you know... Just be loyal to my wife. 
gotta have a little peace on the side. It's expected. It's uh, you know, part of the part of the part of the lifestyle. Personally, if I'm a mobster, I think I'm. I think I respect my subordinates if they have. Like I'm, I, I'm less likely to trust my subordinates if they have a guma. You know, if they'll cheat on the wife, maybe they'll, I don't know, rat me out to, say, the feds. I don't necessarily like that at all. Uh, Bridget Wallace, we're going to take you off alien machinery duty and negate the risk that one of our soldiers is wounded because we kind of need these guys back in one piece. We've only got so much diesel to fuel to go around here. We got to conserve the diesel. You guys begin that action. Kind of do whatever is needed. Could you go, I don't know, down to the gas station and pick me up a couple extra gallons of diesel? I feel like a little understaffed here. If you had any more VIN lurking about, we could use it. Also, feel like maybe it's time to wrap up the episode. If you enjoyed this one, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see more Perfidious Pete encouraging you to make wise financial choices and not buy a vehicle from a vending machine, you might consider subscribing as well. I don't always make good choices, but when I do, I choose Dos Equis because it's the best beer available, question mark. Anyway, right now, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.